Welcome back, football fans. It's time for another weekly edition of The Not Zone. Thanks for being with us here. And make sure you subscribe to the Sports Not YouTube channel. What? You have not done that yet? Mm, we're going to find you. All right, please do it now. Go ahead, hit subscribe, but also do us the big favor. Hit the notifications bell. That way, every time we have a new video, guess what? You'll be the first one to know. And hit that thumbs up too. All right, we like that as well. It makes us feel good. All right, I say we, because it's not just me. I'm Scott Branson, by the way, from Sports Not. Joining me is Ryan Dyrud. He's part of the family over at the LA Football Network. You can check them out at LAFB.com. Also, make sure you follow Ryan at Ryan Dyrud, D-Y-R-U-D-L-A-F-B. I am at LV Gully, and of course, at Sports Not. Doing some fun stuff up there. So make sure you do that. Ryan, we start heading towards the NFL, you know, the offseason. People say, oh, it's the offseason. Not very long. I was at the Combine when I spoke with you guys last week. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on Tuesday, we had, of course, the tag, the franchise tag deadline, which means some players found out they were free agents and some found that they got the franchise tag. And then, of course, next week, we start the new NFL year on March 14th, which is the free for all free agents. Everybody can sign trades can happen. You name it. Uh, I like this time of the year because you get to get a sense for what teams are going to do to address their own issues before the draft. Yeah, it's the best. I love it. I mean, there is the only off season really is, is what June that's basically <laughs> it for NFL. Yep. Um, so we'll, we'll keep plugging along, but good to see you back home safe and in studio <laughs> yet again. Great work last week at the combine. A lot of good stuff coming out there um, doing great work and yeah, excited to get into it. I got my, my Caleb Williams Heisman shirt on, you know, look at that number yes. one overall pick. Yeah. Uh, whether it's the bears or someone trades up, I truly believe he will be number one, but uh, yes. yeah, excited to get it on into all. Well, I, I'm glad you brought him up, though. Let's start there, though, because being at the combine, of course, Caleb Williams. If you don't think he's going to be number one going to the Chicago Bears, you're 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 you got to put your bong down because yes. he's going to the Chicago Bears. I don't care what people are, the Chicago Bears will take Caleb Williams. What I'm shocked by, and I'm not shocked by, it's 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 one of those things where I, I say to myself, Ryan, why are you shocked? Uh, is the fact that just the the negativity around how he handled himself last week and i say how he handled himself from the perspective of saying hey you know what i'm going to the combine but i'm not working out for everybody and guess what i'm not also going to do 32 medical exams yep i'm going to meet with which tells me the bears have already told him they're going to take him anyway yeah so so why am i going to do 30 exams when i know the bears are going to take me or maybe there's two or three teams really with a legitimate shot even if the bears were considering it so why would I do that? So then you get all this criticism from, well, he's too big and he's uh, look at the immaturity. Meanwhile, he goes up there. The first question out of the gate at the media scrum, of course, is a dumb question. Are you afraid to compete? <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so you see this and listen, you know me, I'm a Notre Dame guy. So when it comes to Notre Dame USC, uh, you know what side I'm on. But oh, yeah. Caleb Williams talent, undeniable. Does that mean he's going to be the best NFL quarterback ever? We don't know. We'll see. But he's yeah. got the skill set. Now, does Caleb Williams do some things that from my perspective, like from my age, from the way I like football players, bug me. Yeah. A guy wearing a dress on the cover of a magazine or whatever it was. Yeah. It's kind of weird to me or painting his fingernails with curse words or jumping into the stands with his mom and crying after the game. Like, okay, I get it. It's an emotional game. Guys handle things differently. Some people really, and including in the media, right? You know, the combine you've been there. It's like a media convention is where it really is. And yeah. I was just blown away by how much negativity towards this kid which i think is unjustified yeah no i'm glad you brought that up we literally recorded our our usc trojan show last night we'll go up later today and that was that was our whole topic we talked about was in reality in my opinion the caleb williams slander and mm. um you know it, it's gotten to the point where it's I, i'm with you scott i'm like i don't know why i'm surprised because this happens um every year Maybe not to quite the extent that it's at now, just because he is such a polarizing guy. But it, it's it's polarizing in interesting. Even that sense of the word is interesting because he he never done anything bad off the field. He's gotten in <laughs> zero trouble. Yeah, the fingernail thing was you know say what you want about it. I don't love the curse words like we talked about that mm -hmm. last night. But in reality, he did it for charity, like raised money for mental health in order to do it. So there was some positives that came out of it. Ultimate competitor. Teammates love him. Coaches love him. There's never been a bad word said about him by anyone within the locker room, within the USC organization, or even going back to Oklahoma. Um, 
he's great on campus. Like other students love him. He's kind of a down to earth guy when he's off camera that people have said. So it's, it's really just come down to, you know, just media wanting to kind of attack a guy that's, that's made it big, that made a lot of money in college for the first time mm -hmm. that we've seen ever with, you know, NIL making upwards of like five or so million dollars over his career. And, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I think he's handled it fairly well. You know, it, oh, yeah. there's stuff that he still needs to be coached on. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely some like body language and, and, and stuff when, when answering questions that he doesn't like to, you know, have some different composure and how he does it. He's not perfect by any means, but in terms of the combine, like Joe Burrow didn't throw, right. uh, Andrew Luck didn't throw Peyton Manning didn't throw in terms of the medicals. You, you hit the nail on the head. Like there's three teams that have the potential to get him when he goes and visits those teams. Guess what? He's going to do medicals with them. So why do it for all 32 teams? If there's no need, if right. you're Caleb Williams, you are the future number one overall pick. There is nothing you could do at the combine to raise your stock. So why do anything? Right. Go there, support your teammates, which is what he did. Support his teammates, had some fun, did interviews with teams, stayed on the field. The last one on Saturday on the field to talk to all the coaches there and thank them for helping out. And go home and, and then go do your pro day and then go meet with the actual he, teams that are going to draft you. Not only that, but he was helping clean up the, after the cone drills. He was like helping them. Yeah. Like it wasn't like he was just out there standing there, you know, being a big shot. He actually was helping these guys put stuff away. So again, and I and I think I think you're right about the fact that you look at this this idea of of just this malice towards. I don't under I don't understand it. You you do, you're right. You see it for certain players at certain times for certain reasons, the poor kid who talked about flat earth, right? I mean, look, <laughs> I'm not a flat earth guy. I have no problem admitting that, yep. but I know lots of people who have wacky beliefs. And I, I was next to journalists in the media room and say, man, they're crazy. If they draft that crazy kid, it's like, what does it have to do with him playing football? And I do think it's kind of wacky, but so what? Like yeah. this malice towards these kids, like just let them do what they're supposed to do. Cause they don't agree with you. And by the way, Ryan, Caleb William doesn't owe anybody anything but himself. He's in a situation, he's going into an entertainment business where people will try to take advantage of you. If he blew out his knee and could never play again, nobody's going to pay him. Yep. Nobody's going to be there for Caleb Williams, right? So you got to look out for you. And I always find it interesting that when players do that, especially young, yes, he hasn't proven himself in the NFL yet. But when young players do that, you suddenly – these same reporters who are criticizing him are the ones championing kids getting paid to be in Madden. It's like, what are you talking about? It's the same thing. Yeah. Like, they're looking out for their best interest. So don't criticize him or his family for doing what's right for them. You know, I, look, Marvin Harrison Jr., I thought, would deserve more criticism because mm -hmm. he didn't show. He just didn't show for his press conference and no advance warning from the NFL, no advance warning from him. It's like, yeah, it's not, not going to be there. Good right? Point. Yeah. And and listen, we knew he wasn't going to work out. We knew that, right? He was there for interviews. But that to me was like, where's that? Oh, okay, because he's a Big Ten school. And again, I live in Big Ten country, but I grew up on the West Coast, so I know that the the West the East Coast bias is very real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I think in this case, that was it, because not a peep about Marvin Harrison, other than journalists complaining that they didn't get to talk to him. That was it. Yeah. So don't don't treat one player differently. And again, he's got some he's got some intricacies that I'm a little bit weary of. But so what? Like, can he play football? That's all. That's all that should matter. What he does off the field, what he wants to look like, whatever. You know, who cares? So I thought it was way overblown when you look at that stuff. When you look at the rest of the the combine, though, um, you know, not a lot of huge storylines. Of course, get people get impressed with 40 yard dashes and all this kind of stuff. And some guys help themselves. There's no question, especially if you're a guy rolling in there and they say you're a third or fourth round and you do so well that now they're talking about you sneaking into the second round. It's a lot of money. Yeah. So oh, yeah. so you get that piece of it. But now they've made those teams have made all those evaluations. And now you're in the situation where <clears throat> yesterday we had the franchise tag deadline. Some of the names we saw tagged. I want to get some of your response here, Ryan. Yeah. Josh Allen, of course, <clears throat> edge rusher for edge the Jaguars. Rusher. Yeah. Brian Burns with the Panthers. Uh, you had T. Higgins with the Bengals, who now is rumored to maybe be on the trading block. Jalen Johnson, my favorite cornerback in the NFL, actually. He mm. gets uh, he is not a free agent. He's going to be with the Chicago Bears. Uh, Matt Abuke, who's a guy that the Raiders were interested in with the with the Ravens. They're they've placed tag on him, uh, as well as Legarius Sneed and Antone Winfield Jr. 
mm-hmm. who was a Tom Telesco draft pick, by the way. Um, and Saquon Barkley was not tagged, at, nor was Christian Wilkins. So, so some surprises so far, um, but not really. I mean, I think Barkley we kind of knew because the Giants said it was on the table, but they didn't necessarily th- say they were going to do it. And the Christian Wilkins, like two or three days ago, we kind of knew mm-hmm. that uh, the Dolphins were not going to tag him and let him test free agency. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only, I mean, not the only, but the biggest interesting thing to me, Scott, and I'm trying to think back, but I don't remember there being this many tag situations that are immediately (laughs) talked about as a trade, right? Like a tag and trade. So you mentioned T. Higgins. um, Brian Burns is another one that's been Mm -hmm. talked about a tag and trade. Legereus Sneed, another one that Mm -hmm. the Chiefs have said they're very open to trading him. So um, I don't remember. I'm, I'm trying to think back and correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, I just don't remember that often where, you know, if you tag a guy, you're trying to get a long-term deal done. If not, they play on the tag and you try to get next year. Whereas this year, those are, those are three. And I think there's even more that I'm missing. Those are three pretty prominent players that the team is basically saying, we're not going to let you test for agency, but you're probably not going to be here next year because we're going to trade you on this tag and a new team will work out a new deal. Yeah. Um, so I found that very interesting because I don't remember that happening that often. It's a different approach because I remember more happening in, in previous years was the sign and trade, right? Mm-hmm. So, hey, so you're Legereus Need. Okay, we're the Chiefs. Um, we're working with a third team, and you're going to negotiate with them. We're going to sign you the contract, and then you just transfer the contract over. So it's a trade, right? Or or you trade, you sign him to a, a, the tag, like you said, and then you trade him, and he does a new deal there, which is possible too. So, so yeah, it, it's, it's interesting how things – now, the salary cap went up. And so you wonder, and it went up more than teams anticipated. So you wonder too, if there's anything at play there, what's going on. Maybe people weren't expecting uh, certain things to happen, but, but I do think that, you know, ahead of, we, we had less trade talk. We had some trade talk at the combine. It wasn't really an active combine. Like we, I think last year, you go back to last year, there was a lot more talk. Of course, there was the draft picks going on there too, at the top of the draft. But it was pretty quiet this week. There was a lot of talk about the Justin Fields. He took over the first half of the week at Combine, and then that kind of fell off a cliff, and we haven't heard much since then. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the other deals here and there. So I'm expecting it to explode in any time. I know that's more of the optimist point of view because we like action in the NFL, especially trade action, as it's gotten more and more popular. Uh, What are your thoughts, though? You you think that that means that this is quiet before the storm uh, with, with the tag today and then, of course, coming next week, the beginning of free agency? I think so. I mean, I think it's going to be a wild, wild week. And we have seen Scott, which I'm sure we'll get to, but a lot of players today, even or Tuesday, even released, you know, the Seahawks yeah. released both safeties, Quandre Diggs and, mm-hmm. and Jamal Adams. So um, I think a lot of big name guys that teams are saying, all right, you know, we'll, we'll get you out of here early. Russell Wilson, we haven't talked about. He was officially, we all knew it was coming, but officially released on Monday. Um, so letting these players explore early before the frenzy begins on, on March 11th. And so, yeah, I think it's it's a calm before a a pretty wild storm that we'll be in the middle of, you know, covering and and reporting on as as things happen because it'll be fast and furious, and you know every team will be involved. I think that's what that's what I love about the NFL. We talk all the time, but you know, other sports, it feels like there's like whenever there's free agency or big trades, it's kind of like there's five to ten teams involved yeah. every time. Yeah, the NFL is every every team, even if you have no cap space. Somehow these teams are involved with you know releasing big name players. And then they they end up freeing up a bunch of cast base and go sign someone big. So um, every team's involved, all 32. Uh, it's going to be uh, fast and wild. And I think we'll see a lot of big name players in new places this year. So to answer your question, yes. yeah, I think it's definitely a <laughs> That's a great way to answer it. Uh, but I do think, I mean, listen, you also had Michael Pittman Jr. tagged in Indianapolis. Yes. Uh, and you talked about, of course, the safety list Seahawks right now, as they're being called uh, with Adams and Diggs getting out. And the Texans re-signed tight end Dalton Schultz, which I think was a good signing. He did really well on that team last year um, with, with C.J. Stroud. So you look at that and you start to think about some of these signings and the team's needs. And, and to me, the thing that's so fascinating about the free agent period that we're coming up on next week is the fact that, uh, yes, it's always interesting, to your point, that teams can sign free agents a lot easier in the NFL than you see it happen in Major League Baseball and some of the other sports. But at the same time, it also sets up what their draft strategy is going to look like. Because, you know, if you have a team that's got a glaring need 
and you know, let's say so, uh, uh, an edge rusher is a free agent, big edge rusher. So let's mm-hmm. say, or they make a trade for Brian Burns. Well, then you know they're not going to be in the market probably for a a, 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 a edge rusher in the first round, right? You yeah. know, suddenly, and so if your team's interested in edge rusher and that team's ahead of you, you're like, oh, phew, I like that. That's coming down. So I think that's good. And and there's some positions where it's really dicey. It's hard, like the quarterback position. You look at teams like the Falcons. You look at teams. Um, like the Raiders and even the Giants and the Rams, these teams that are trying to get up in the draft to get one of these young kids, um, they also got to play the other side. They got to play, they got to hedge their bets. They got to think about, okay, what are we doing free agency first to bring a guy in in case we're not able to do what we want to do in the draft and we have some sort of fallback plan? To me, that's the fascinating piece when the free agency uh, begins on the 14th. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. This is a quarterback driven league. We've talked about it a few times. Which quarterback, if you're in the market for one, which, you know, you cover the Raiders, the Raiders are I'm not saying they're in the market for these guys, but of these three, which one entices you the most? Obviously one requires a trade in Justin Fields, but I think we all know he's not going to be in Chicago. They will mm-hmm. exercise a trade and from everything we've heard from the combine, I'm sure you were in conversations. Um, the market's not great on him, so they probably mm-hmm. won't get a, a lot back for him, but he will not be there. And then Russell Wilson now, a free agent, can sign where he pleases. There's been reports that he's willing to take a, a much smaller deal because the Broncos are paying. I mean, his what's crazy about the Russ deal is his five-year deal is kicking in now. The Broncos now. haven't even paid him any of haven't his even extension. Paid him. So he will get two <laughs> years of his extension to play for someone else. So he's oh, there's been talks he's going to be willing to take a league minimum because he's getting $39 million from the Broncos. And then obviously Kirk Cousins is the true like top quarterback top. in, in true free agency. Yes. You know, Ryan yes. Tannehill's there, but obviously he had a big drop off last year. So you look at those three, Justin Fields, who will be need to be traded for, but will be available. Russell Wilson and Kirk cousins. What's your hierarchy of kind of those three, if you're an organization. So I think it depends on the organization and where the team is. Right. So, so if I'm, if I'm a team that's pretty close and I say pretty close in that either just missed the playoffs or I was in the playoffs. We need an upgrade at QB. Uh, I, I think Kirk Cousins is the guy, right? And I don't know how long I, – I, what's the rumor? Kirk Cousins wants four years or something like that, I think it is? Three, uh, three or four. Three, yeah. three or four years. So for a three-year guy, like he's got enough left in the tank that I think three years is fine. So so you look at those situations. Atlanta, you look at uh, – I'm trying to think who else might be a good fit for him um, that has the cap – but you, you see that and you're like, okay, that makes sense. A guy like Russell Wilson, I think could pretty much go anywhere as long as the system is, is, is right for him. And, and I know there's increased talk about Las Vegas there. We'll see if that happens, but I think Russell Wilson would fit nicely in Atlanta as well. So, so there's, there's plenty of opportunities, but to me, I look at realistic, like I think, I think Kirk Cousins is going to be, is going to cost so much that for the other teams, other than one or two teams that are in that realm, I think I look at it and I say probably the Baker Mayfield, Gardner Minshew, uh, um, Russell Wilson. Like I think of all three of them, of course, I would take Russell Wilson above the other two because he's a proven winner no matter what happened in Denver. And he had a good year last year. I don't care what happened with the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Statistically, he had a good year. I know it wasn't a good year in the locker room and all that jazz. But um, the only thing I think you're concerned with Russell Wilson is at his point in his career – not so much the skill set, but he he likes you know he likes to freelance a little bit. He, he's not going to just go out there and do what you ask him. So if that's the case, are you comfortable with that? Does it fit your system? And are you comfortable with him in the locker room? Not that he's a bad locker room guy, but he brings obviously his persona and everything that goes with it. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So okay, let me give you two scenarios here. Talking mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins, let me give you two teams. We'll go one by one, so I don't spoil anything. Let's start <laughs> with your Raiders, right? Yep. Sitting at a uh, twelve or eleven, right? In or thirteen, excuse me, in the 13. draft, correct? They sit there with, I believe, 42 or so million in cap space. So they they have some money to play with. Obviously, a lot of needs, <laughs> a lot of areas. But, mm-hmm. you know, quarterback, obviously, is one of those needs. You, whether you're Tom Telesco or, or you know, someone with influence, which you have yeah. some influence, I like to think, with the Raiders organization, <laughs> Scott Branson. Very little. Are you going after Kirk Cousins or are you trading up from 13 to go get one of these rookies? You know, um, it's a good question. I, I've always said no for that situation to, to, to Kirk cousins, because my assumption has been that they were going to do whatever they can to get up in the draft and get a young court. Because I think the Raiders problem, I mean, outside of Derek Carr in 2014, and he was there nine years, unfortunately they didn't win with him, but they have not 
they have not drafted and kept a quarterback. It's always been bringing another guy, bringing another guy, bringing another guy. Now, Kirk Cousins is not just another guy. He's not a washed up Carson Palmer who actually did some okay things with the Raiders, but nonetheless, he's not like that. Uh, and certainly Rich Gannon had a great career and did so well when he came there later in his career, uh, was an MVP. But I, I look at that and I say to myself, oh, yeah, if you don't think and you can't get to where you want to be in the draft, it would be tempting, but with the needs that they have too. And, and like you said, they have money. Uh, but to me, it, it would be, it would be dicey just because I think, I think you need to start thinking more about the future and free agency to me is the sprinkling on top, Ryan, right? So you're close to, you're close to making a drive for a championship. To me, I sign Kirk Cousins any day of the week, right? If that, if I'm weak at quarterback or whatever, mm -hmm. great. But I think with the Raiders, they're on the cusp of being a playoff team, right? Just getting over the hump, but they're not in a place where they're going to make a run and win a Super Bowl. So that's that's why I would not sign him. Now, you could argue the other way. You could say, well, with Cousins, maybe they do that. Maybe they yeah. do. Maybe they do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting. And obviously, we'll talk over the next week. It, it doesn't seem like there's any murmurs of that happening for the Raiders, but, you no. know, obviously something to think about depending on what the ask is for them to move up. And there's been talks, you know, yeah. at the combine and, and of, of them trying to move up to, you know, eight, four, all those spots, which will yep. cost a lot. So the other yeah. two, going to throw at you real quick. All right. Washington Commanders hold the number two pick. Mm. Obviously, everyone's saying, okay, they're taking whoever doesn't. If Caleb Williams goes one, they're going probably May Daniels or JJ McCarthy there at two. However, they have 92 million in cap space. Lead the NFL <laughs> in cap space. Bring Cousins home. Cousins started his career there, did great. <laughs> they got a new coach, they got a new GM. They're rebuilding differently. I mean, is that a, a, an instance where you could see maybe they say, hey, let's just go with the vet instead of taking a chance with our number two pick on a, a kid that may never pan out? Yeah, see, I think in that case, uh, if I'm them, and yes, you do, you're right. You have so much, what, the second most, or no, they have the most cap space, most. right? Most yeah. cap space in the NFL. Uh, it, I, I would be tempted to, but I almost think that would be counterproductive. I do think you have, look, in today's NFL, most valuable thing is a rookie quarterback contract right? Yep. Because it's the most important position. And you're right. So you draft Drake May, you draft Jane Daniels, whoever you like better. And it doesn't work out. So then you just do it again. You draft somebody else, right? So, so yes. So I think they should, I think they should sign one of the next tier guys. I, I would, if I was them, even if you're drafting Drake May, I would go sign Baker Mayfield or, or one of those Gardner Minshew, somebody like that who can come out and win games, right? Yeah. And the rookies there, and is can spell him go in if he needs to or sit for a year if he has to or compete at least compete for a starting job. So you're right. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting proposition. It would be very tempting if I was the general manager of the the commanders. But I, I would I would just opt to try to find that guy that you're going to need. Although if Cousins can play three or four years at the level he's been playing, the question is was he going to have enough weapons around him for him to really be as effective as he could be? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And I, I still, I, I'm not saying I, this will happen. I think, I think Caleb Williams is going number one overall, no matter what. Yeah. The Bears would be silly to move him, but I, I think Washington, with you know their their offensive coordinator there, uh, I, the guy from USC, that all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank on his name r randomly. Um, Cliff me Kingsbury. Out here. Cliff, thank you, Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, they, if they throw the kitchen sink at Chicago to move up one spot. Maybe. For Caleb, who's from Washington. I mean, that can certainly happen. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. Where they're at as an organization, they just reset everything with the with ownership, GM, mm -hmm. coach. Why not do it the quarterback too? Like, why bring in a vet when you're not you're not even they're not close to making a run yet? Like they got to right. rebuild from the ground up. Dan Quinn, I think, was a great hire because you can rebuild the culture there, but you start it from the bottom with a new rookie quarterback. Makes no sense paying a guy 50 million a year for three years if you're gonna win nine yeah. games max next year. Right. So, and that's why I think it's important for them to find a veteran quarterback too, right? They have to find a veteran quarterback, but I think it's one of those second tier guys Yeah. Um, because you still want to try to win games, even if you're rebuilding and you also want that young quarterback, you need a, you need a safety vent, right? In case something yeah. happens and he's not ready to go, whatever, uh, whether it's may or J Jaden Daniels, we'll see uh, what happens, but yeah, those are the quarterback situations are all fascinating. And that's a place Scott that maybe I, I still think Pittsburgh is the best landing spot for Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. But if, but if Russ is going to take a league minimum because he's getting paid by Denver, like he can go to Washington and play a year or two while they develop their number two overall pick. Dan Quinn's a veteran coach. They'll yeah. get along swimmingly and he can kind of either, 
if he doesn't end his career there, at least rebuild his resume for his final contract landing spot. So yes. something to keep an eye on too. Yeah, I still like, I think, and I, and I completely forgot to mention that, I, I still like Pittsburgh as a destination for him. Although now you're hearing this stuff out of Pittsburgh that they want to stick with <sighs> Kenny. Stick with Pitt, so, huh? <laughs> yes, and it's like, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't think that, He's a viable starter in the NFL, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so so you, the, all those situations are going to be at the top of the list this week, and you look at that. And then there's going to be some of these other situations where you look at players, again, who are free agents um, and, and are going to be now. There's a lot of free agents on rosters that meant a lot to that roster, meaning that you have a guy who's on your offensive line or on your defensive line or is a safety, and suddenly uh, you got to make a decision. Are you going to go – get them back. So I think there's going to be, there's going to be surprise cuts. There's going to be surprise guys that aren't tendered or aren't getting offers from the teams that they've been on, which then allows these players to move around. And increasingly every single year, the numbers every year, Ryan go up and up and up with yep. player movement in the NFL. And so I think we're going to see it again this off season too. Yeah. And I mean, there's some big names, right? Chris Jones yeah. and obviously the Jerry Steen got tagged. So Chris Jones is going to be a free agent. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Leonard Williams is, you know, not as big a name as he used to be, but still a good interior defense alignment. Daniel Hunter, um, Mike Evans did lock down a two year deal. So, so he will be yeah. back with the Buccaneers. They were able to get that done before Dory Jackson, you know, a great corner. Yeah. We did a, we did a full Rams show yesterday. That's up on LAFB talking corners that the Rams could go after. So yeah, Scott, there's gonna be some big names. I always, I love this time of year. Cause it's just, it's frenetic. It's wild. Um, <laughs> you see some fun storylines. You see guys get paid. There's always, everyone's like freaking out. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you're paying that guy that much, but the market dictates it. And that's kind of what's happened. And that's why I loved your point. You said earlier, I didn't really comment on it, but you build your team through the draft. You, I'm paraphrasing. You build your team through the draft. The, the free agency is like the toppings, right? The sprinkles right. that get you to that. If you're here, gets you just above, so you can now make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> but if you're building your team for agency, good luck. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah. That's what you do. You you build the roster, and then you have one or two glaring needs, and you go address it. And that's where you throw the money, right? So yeah. that's where you go out and get the free random agent. question so, for you. Yes. Random question. This is this is going to be a very backhand not even a compliment this is just going to be a an insult uh to this team <laughs> have you seen yet a player it seems like every year the jacksonville jaguars have a good amount of cap space and they mm -hmm. always sign big name guys have you seen can you remember a player that has chosen to go to jacksonville and actually had a good career for them in free agency they've done some stuff in the draft free but agency. i think of all these guys that chase the money and go to jacksonville and it just does not pan out yeah, not a chase the money guy. If you go way back to the beginning of the Jaguars, Keenan McCardell mm -hmm. had an okay career, uh, and then he went there and he exploded in the last couple. He had a great late career, UNLV alum, of course. Um, and see, I can bring it all back. Um, and so he was one of those guys. But outside of that, no. I mean, everybody, there's been people, obviously, who were drafted and did well there for a bit, um, including in the running backs. But yeah, no, I can't think of anybody. It's yeah, interesting. I they're like the, they're like the the old clippers of the NFL. Yeah, it's just like where players <laughs> sign, get paid and go off to die, I guess. I mean, Fred Taylor I think was a Fred Taylor. free agent, but again that's back in the day. Yes. In recent memories, I'm thinking of all these, you know, they they've paid, you know, Clayus Campbell, I'm not saying his career ended, but you know, he was kind of forgotten there. Yeah. Um Jackson from Denver after when the Super mm -hmm. Bowl went there and seemingly disappeared calvin ridley went there and seemingly disappeared he'll be a free agent again um his was obviously a different scenario after being suspended but yeah i mean they'll be in the, they'll they'll sign someone big and we'll see if and, that guy can have a good career there and it's funny you bring that up because I, I i really believe man i i, when I spent some time it was at the end of the season quick story and i, I was talking because i always liked trevor lawrence mm -hmm. trevor lawrence's numbers are not good and yeah. he's had injury and so to me, this next year for them in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence is a big year. If he doesn't do it, if he doesn't show progress, if he doesn't improve, whew, that's a big bust. And I, I shouldn't say big bust. I should say it's a disappointing uh, juncture in his career and where he's at, where you think he's at, because it's a good example of you need that quarterback needs to take you to the next level. Yeah. No matter what's happened with Peterson, all that stuff, and and obviously before him, but but now you need that quarterback to elevate the team. That's the kind of quarterback you need. And and Trevor Lawrence coming out of college, clearly that's the kind of guy he was looked at to be, and he just has not been that. Yeah, and they've given him weapons, right? They, yes. They got Kevin Whitley. They signed um, uh, the guy out of Arizona. 
um, receiver that I'm blanking on now, uh, Christian. Um, they got uh, running back that uh, ETN that they drafted. So they've given yeah. them opportunities, given weapons. They get Doug Peterson, who's an offensive minded guy. They had a good run two years ago. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely in his ballpark. So let me, uh, if you want, we can wrap with this. I don't know what else you have planned, yeah. but let me ask no, you this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of put you on the spot since we're getting okay. into free agency. Sounds good. When you look at the, the top teams, and it could even not even be a top team, but I'll just give you kind of, you know, commanders are first in cap. Patriots two, they usually do spend a good amount, at least they did in the Belichick years. Titans three, Colts four, Texans five, and then we can go down the list. Bears are up there, Cardinals. Who do you think of the teams that maybe of at the top or just anyone? Like who do you think makes the biggest splash? Every year we go through, you know, winners and losers in free agency, and there's always a team that seems to sign, you know, three big names and they get the big contracts because they have that cap space. So when you kind of look at the rosters at hand, when you look at the teams with the money, in your opinion. Who do you think makes the biggest splash this free agency? Wow. The biggest splash. Hmm. You know, I, I I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to give you two answers. One is out of the teams you mentioned. Um, I actually think, I think the New York giants mm. ready for that one. I know you didn't mention, you didn't mention them. Did you know, but I think no, but that works, but they're, they're, they're what they're number six or seven. In the draft, six um, in the draft, and like middle of the road cap space with like almost forty million. Right, I think they could do two things: trade up in the draft and make a couple big free agent signings. The other team I'll say is the one here just south of me, which is the Bengals. Bengals have sixty-five million in cap space. Right, mm -hmm. um, they're they're losing some some good players, but uh, they can supple with sixty-five million. You tag T Higgins, so that's not going to you know break the bank if they don't trade him beforehand. And Burroughs supposed, supposedly uh, this week said he's going to be back in May full strength. If that happens, then suddenly you can go get an offensive lineman. You can get some defense. I mean, imagine Chris Jones on the Bengals. I mean, yeah, something like that. And then they they need some defensive back help too, and they can go get a big name, one of the top five defensive backs in free agency too, because they got the money to do it. Because they, they do have to take care of Jamar Chase, but they're going to do that next year basically. So that's a team to watch as well. I think yeah. from a, from a, from a free agency standpoint. Yeah. So those are great. Interesting. I, and I love that we have different ones. So it makes it easy for conversation. <laughs> Two I'm looking at that I think can make big splashes are both, and they both have equally 70 million in cap space and it's the Colts and the Texans. Ah. And you look at the Texans playoff team, won a playoff game. Yes. Rookie of the year at quarterback. Like they're, they're ready to win now. And so they have 70 million to get a couple pieces, get those sprinkles you can put on top and, and they could just be that much better. The defense is going to be better with D'Amico Ryans. Their offensive coordinator stayed put. So they're going to keep proving that you add someone alongside Nico Collins and, and tank Dell and stuff mm -hmm. for more weaponry. And obviously out of the offensive line is probably what they'll really need to do. When you look at, you know, Tyron Smith being a free agent out of Dallas, maybe he stays in the state of Texas, but goes across to Houston. So the Texans I think can make a big splash. And then the Colts just, Missed the playoffs in that last game against the Texans. Against the Texans yeah. with their backup quarterback Gardner Minshew, who I love. I love Gardner Minshew, but saw some positive stuff from Anthony Richardson, their rookie quarterback. So if he's able to put it all together for year two and be fully healthy, they've got weapons. You mentioned they tagged Michael Pittman Jr., so he'll be back. You know they've got a good offensive line. They've got some pieces on defense. Seventy million to play with. A couple pieces where they could go from just missing the wild card to being a potential division winner. Although they'll go against that team. I just talked about the Texans in the same division. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. I mean, and it's interesting too, because I think with the Texans, if you're the Texans and you can, you can give uh you can go sign Saquon Barkley, like yeah. at a running back, right. Or Josh Jacobs, if he doesn't sign with the Raiders, you know, one of those top running backs too, because Again, you know how their offense is progressing, but if you had that weapon back there, because like you said, you got that much cash, it really, all you're going to guarantee is about 12 or 13 million to a guy like Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Even if it's a three-year deal, you're really only guaranteeing 12, 13 million. So you do that, it's like you add a little dynamic piece to that offense already that does well. You just signed your tight end, right? So, so yeah, so it's going to be fascinating, dude. There's so many teams that are like, to me, on the precipice of being really, really good like the Texans, like the Colts, I think could be right there too, that that you want to see what they do. And it's like they can make a move one way or they can make a move that gives them steady improvement or just throws them into the stratosphere. So it's going to be fun to watch. And we're going to be here all for it, my man. Yes, sir. No question, right? Can't wait. going to be wild. <laughs> Free agency frenzy. Yes. Next week, we will get into it, right? We'll get into that. We'll be just a few days outside of 
actually one day, right? If I did my math correctly or two days uh, prior to the start of the NFL, we'll still, we'll have some better rumors around trades. We might even have trades by then uh, that are just waiting for, because remember the elite, the legal tampering period, right? Begins Monday. Yeah. Right. Which is Monday. when everything comes out. So they all right. come out Monday and exactly. they become official on Wednesday. <laughs> right. So Monday through Wednesday, we will be back here on Wednesday and we'll go through whatever we got. It's going to be a fun time, but we certainly appreciate it. Ryan, as always, man, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining me here. You're the man, Scott. Appreciate you. Good stuff as always. Talk to you, uh, I mean, next week on here, but obviously probably in the next yes. couple hours. Just on the next couple <laughs> That's right. We will. Uh, the, the joys of working together. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Uh, do us a favor. Appreciate you guys being with us. Make sure you subscribe to the Sports Not YouTube channel. Channel. We got this show. We got all kinds of show. Check out all the sites in the Sports Not family, like Ryan's LA Football Network. We also have Forever Blue Shirts of Hockey. If you're a New York Ranger fan, wherever you're at, we also have great NASCAR coverage. You name it, we got it up on SportsNot.com. So check it out. Subscribe to the channel and uh, give it a thumbs up and hit that notifications bell. Uh, for Ryan, I'm Scott Branson. This has been the Not Zone from Sports Not. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you next week.